and into this and we for each into our column okay now it show our data in here hello guys welcome back to join coder today i will show you how to use ASP.NET Core connect to DB Progress. Okay, let's start. Need to create a new project. I use ASP.NET Core web application. Put the name join goddess. And I use .NET Core version 5. And you can use this version or better than this. Okay, we have a new project here. And for this step, we have a six step. And the first step, we need to have a connection string and we need to add a reference for progress db okay and for a library add a library progress db then we use with a uh, new get packet nature okay and i use progress db version 5 in here okay now it is finished and after that we need to provide connection string we need to provide in this file application setting dot json okay and let to provide connection string and i provide the name progress xql and i have two parameters in here one is connection string and db password okay here we have connection string and up and after that we need to provide application connect okay we need to provide in our config in here in startup we need to provide in configure service okay like this and let me explain in here we get our connection string from configuration the name and parameter number one and name and parameter number two and get from application setting dot json and this one we need to import our library after we install packet already we need to using npg actual progress actual library okay this we provide our connection to the builders connection string and after that we need to have db context for db context it means we need to load a data what we want to get data to show okay and let me create a db context and db db context we need to create a new class. I put the name is application contact. Okay. And the class I need to extend from DB and import Microsoft entity entity frameworks call. Okay. And in this I need to create contractor. So let me put here. Okay. Now we have a DB contact here and we need to have a class for data set. Okay, and put I put here. And so DB set DB set here, we need to have a class. I put the class name is student, so I need to create a new class. One more is yes. student. Okay. And in this class I need to have the property of my table. It is my table have ID, name, and age. Okay, so I need to create all the property. So yes, it's okay. Done. Okay, now our contact is done. And let's go back to startup. When we have connection string and providers a builder already, we need to load the data to service contact. We need to load data, so we need to add the weak contact. Okay, and here's I need to import from there. And one more thing is it is a library different. We need to import entity framework call. Okay, so step we finish a three step. Step number one is we need to provide string and load connection and Number two, we create a contact. And number three, we create a class here. We need to provide data in here. And number four, we need to create a controller. We need to create a new controller for student. 
Okay, I put the name is student controllers. Okay, and for us here, we need to have a view for our student. Okay, and let me create a new folder, a student, and create. Right, let me change here to student list. Okay, the function and our files view. We need to put the name is student list. Okay, I need to create view student list. And for our view here, we need to put here to student list. Okay, and one more thing we need to add in our layout. We need to have a new list in here. Use controller student and action is student list. Okay. List. Okay, and let to run this. Okay, it's work. For add the new function in list here, it's, it can get our view. So, our step we need to get data from our context to our view. Okay, and for use our context DB that we already create application context, we need to declare a new variable like this and import our model. Okay, and we have uh, a constructor for this controller. When application start up, it will get data from our context, application context, DB context, and provide data into and provide the value into the variable. And for return data to our view, I use viewbacks. Okay, so I will provide data to viewbacks. The name is users. If get from our data here, okay. And in our view, we need to create a table, a new table. And let me explain. Here is our titles, and we need to get data from our viewbacks, the viewback name, okay, users, and into list, and we for each into our column, okay? And let to run this. Okay, and click here. Okay, yes, it's work. Okay, now it show our data in here. And let, if you want, okay, let me test a new record in number four. And I put the name ASP.net call. Okay, here the number is the same. Okay, and they fit here. Okay, it's work. So our action is complete. Thank you for watching. Bye.